our next presentation on the 8th grade avian symposium. Give it up to Miss Shelby Liston with the Greater Flamingo. but some people call it the pink flamingo, so it's the most common. Okay, so for classification, um, my bird's scientific name is the Phonocopterus ruber, and its kingdom is Animalia, which all animals are in that kingdom. And the class is Aves, and the greater flamingo is one of the larger members of the Aves class. The philium is chordata. The order is phonocopteriforms. Um, the family is phonocopteridae. The, the genus is phonocopterus. And yeah, and phonocopter, that um, has something to do with flamingos in or something, I think. Um, five birds similar to the greater flamingo are the limpkin, the glossy ibis, the Chinese egret, the rosette spoonbill, and the western reef heron. These birds are all similar. Some are similar in color and body shape, but they all have a rounder body shape with long, thin legs. And... They all kind of live in like a habitat located on water. And some of the physical characteristics, um, the greater flamingo, they are the only ones that live in North and South America, mostly South America. Um, but they're the only ones that have bright pink and bright red colors. The rest are more kind of paler colors. And um, the male greater flamingo is usually larger than the female, and that's only the is, that's the only physical characteristic that you can really tell the difference. And these birds can grow up to five feet tall, which is my height, so mm -hmm. about like that tall. And greater flamingos usually weigh around nine pounds. They don't work <coughs> very much because most of their weight is in their legs. Because I mean, most of their bodies is their legs, so that's most of their weight. And this is the male flamingo, and that's the female. And you can see that he's like a little bit taller, kind of bigger, and she's smaller. And it's difficult if you're just like looking at flamingos to tell if they're a guy or a girl. And um, that's not a very accurate way to tell the difference. And this is a picture of the greater flamingo. You can see that it's bright pink. And um, it has a black bill. And a cool fact is like when it eats, um, that bill has like a filter in it. And so it goes out deeper into the water and like sucks up um, water full of the food that it eats. But there's a filter, so it gets rid of the water. And that's kind of cool. And this, the greater flamingo, it's the largest um, species of flamingo, and it's the only type that's found in North and South America. And this is distribution and habitat. And basically, this is the green areas. That's where the greater flamingo lives. Um, so like Brazil, um, French Guiana, Cuba, Mexico, Ecuador, all the places that are green. So it lives around water in tropical warm habitats. And usually they also live on salt lakes, and but sometimes they do live on fresh water. Uh, and they have little veg vegetation. So like there's some plants up there, but um, usually they don't have that much. And on the ICUN red list, they are ranked as least concern, so they aren't going extinct now, and their conservation status is stable, but um, they only lay one to two eggs per year, so if they keep 
Like if they start to like die, uh, they could easily go extinct. And the male and female great flamingo, they stay together through the mating process and they raise the uh, chick together and they'll take turns like taking care of it. But um, they have a monogamous mating system and the female will lay usually one egg per breeding season. Sometimes she lays two, but if she lays two, only one will hatch usually. Um, but she does lay two eggs a year. And the greater flamingo starts to mate when it's around six years old. And that's pretty old. I think a lot of birds don't wait that long. And um, baby flamingos, they're a lot smaller than the adults. They're really small. And um, the egg's about the size of a grapefruit or an orange, so like that big. And um, they have down feathers and they're more white. And I'll talk about that. And so here's a baby one. So and that's really small. And like, yeah, you can tell it's not pink at all. And um, in between the first five to eight days that the baby flamingos are born in, they join up with other baby flamingos and form groups called crushes. And they just um, they are in these crushes a lot, but the parents will still care for them. And um, they'll care for them until it's unneeded, so maybe around 50 days. Um, the chicks, they begin, they begin to like fly at around 65 to 90 days old. And they're in their crushes until then. And the greater flamingo can live a long life. Um, they live 25 to 60 years. Um, there's no average amount of years that they live. Scientists haven't um, recorded that yet. But there is one that lit, that's recorded and it lived 44 years. So that's pretty long. Um, the male and female, they live the same amount of life. One doesn't live longer than the other. And in captivity, they can live longer because they're kept safer from predators. They have all the resources they need. And the, the greater flamingo, um, it doesn't have any seasonal patterns. It doesn't go into torpor or hibernation, but sometimes it does migrate. Usually they don't need to because they live in tropical climates, but sometimes they don't. It gets colder, so they just move to warmer climates. And for food, uh, they eat insects, worms, vegetation, and algae. And to get most of their food, they swim deeper into the water. And then they do that thing with the filter that I was saying, that they like bend their nose and they suck it up. The filter gets rid of all the water, but they get all their pigments and they get all their insects and worms. And a um, really cool fact right here is that the alpha and beta carotenoid pigments, they, um, they make the flamingo pink. Uh, so in the pigments in the food that they eat, that goes and it makes them pink. And that's like why the babies aren't pink because they don't get enough of those when they're like so. And the human and predator relationships, uh, this is kind of the, the gray. Uh, that's kind of the effect. And then the blue is kind of what's happening that humans do. So when we like build roads, houses, um, that can get rid of flamingo habitats. And so the flamingos, they won't breed, they won't, and then that gets rid of some of their food sources. So that kind of kills them. And um, some weird people, they eat like flamingo eggs in the flamingo itself. There are hunting laws against it, but people break them. And a weird fact is that like in ancient Rome, people used to eat flamingo tongues. Yeah. And, uh, but humans aren't the biggest worry to a flamingo because um, they don't usually hurt them. And um, some of the predators, 
are the lappet faced vulture, white headed vulture, marabou stork, eagle, black kite, turkey vulture, foxes, badgers, and wild horse, and yellow legged gulls. And those birds, they um, they hunt for the flamingo, and the animals they hunt more for the eggs, I think. Um, but they are the predators of the flamingo. And I thought that the coolest fact about the greater flamingo was its color, how um, it gets its pink from the pigments in its food, and also from shrimp is one of the main food sources that gives it that color. And that's work cited, work cited. And that's it. Any questions?